Welcome to the Old Fashioned Health Network, Good Health Inside and Out. I'm your host of the Fitness Health Jazz. There's only a couple of people on the planet that can actually say they've won Mr. Monkey at eight times in second. And we have one of them here today in the building. Please give a warm welcome for Mr. Lee Haynes. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great, doing great. Great to be here. I appreciate you being with us this morning. Well, a real pleasure to be here. Of course, take a seat, take a All seat. All right, here we go. So, as I was mentioning to our guests, you're eight times consecutive, Mr. Olympia. I want to get right into that, right? So, you won your first competition in 1984. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what differentiated you from the others that allowed you to win eight times consecutively? What do you think it was? <laughs> I think I was hungry. <laughs> you know, you know, being a country boy and growing up and, you know, in humble beginnings and so forth, we were taught to, you know, whatever you want to do, you got to work hard. You got to put your total self into it. Okay. And, I mean, I grew up uh, being... Uh, trained in that manner and, and right. you know inspired as such that you give it all or don't give nothing and uh, after winning the Teenage America in 1979 and then winning the uh, the Junior Nationals in 1982 okay. the Nationals in 1982 the LBB World Championship in 1982 okay then that's thing you know the Mr. Going. Olympia kept I kept going, going. <laughs> so uh, and after winning once you get a taste of winning you love the way it feels hey <laughs> and you love the rewards that comes along with it so okay. uh, that's sort of, sort of how I got started you know and after okay. that I knew that I had a, a chance at going to the next level okay and apparently uh, it worked out. I took that chance. So you mentioned you won Mr. Team, oh, IFBB, Olympia. What was your fondest memory? Was it the first Olympia? Was it number eight? Was it the first time on stage? What was it? I think it was the last one when I won the eighth one in a row that had okay. given me a place in the Guinness World Book. Okay. Uh, no one had ever did that before. And the fact that my wife Shirley was there on stage with me from the beginning. Matter of fact, she helped bankroll my my uh, oh, she was the, the my, yeah yeah. In 19 uh, what 1979 when I get ready for the Teenage America, she helped bankroll my application fee. So well, there she so, was. I know you won number seven, right? So was there an instance where where you actually actually asked yourself, should you go for number eight? Oh yes, after I won did the seventh one. Did you question that though? Should you go for it? Oh, oh, I did, okay. I did, because after winning the seventh one, I said, well, you know. No one has ever did seven in a row. Okay. That was a record. Of course, Arnold had seven overall, but not seven in a row. Gotcha. So I had the consecutive win record. And matter of fact, I sat down with, with my wife, Shirley, and said, hey, baby, what do you think? You think I should uh, right. go for this eighth one? And she looked at me and said, think. Think what? What do you mean? <laughs> should you go? I was embarrassed <laughs> by the fact that I sounded crazy right. to her. It's like a no-brainer for her. Like, it was a no-brainer. Why would you stop? Exactly. You know, Shirley was an athlete. You right. know, so she, she's hardcore. Okay. And so it was sort of an <laughs> insult to her for me to even ask something like that. And so she was there with me. And when okay. I won the H. Miss Olympia, she joined me on stage along with my, my son, Josh, who was four at the time, and my daughter, Olympia, okay. who had just turned one. So the entire the family Olympia. was there. Yes, I named her after the oh, title. Wow, so I really won <laughs> nine Mr. Olympias. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so as you know, bodybuilding has evolved over the years, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of talk about the state of where it was when you were in the sport mm -hmm. to, to today, right? So right. when you and Arnold were in the sport, you know, you're, I look at you, you guys' physiques. I mean, mm -hmm. you had the V-shape. You had a really nice mm -hmm. physique right so I want to kind of go into something called lumberwism um, and you know kind of the guys who who are on stage today um, lumberwism is like if you kind of like a gut and when in bodybuilding so what is, what is, <laughs> and what, yeah. what is you know people call it you know HGH, HGH gut or something um, but the physiques are definitely different from yeah. back then so um, what is your take on that well I think what happened uh, Bodybuilder sort of changed gears to in a negative way. I was the largest Mr. Olympia ever, you know, at five foot eleven, two hundred fifty-four pounds. Right. However, I had a thirty-two inch waist. That's, that's that was amazing. different, <laughs> you know. That was different. That was something that was God given, and so you had the different athletes. Uh, or uh, the sport was in search of another mass monster, okay. but it went in the wrong directions. You know, the small waist, the vacuum. That wasn't something that came along with the mass. I had it, yeah. but they didn't have it. Of course, Arnold had it too. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was a main staple. Uh, 
during the, the magical years of bodybuilding. So it sort of got off track. Yeah. But I'm happy to see that it's now trying to make his way back. You see that okay. in Phil Heath, you see that in Dexter Jackson, Sean Roden, yeah, uh, Cedric yeah, McMillan. Game for a while, he's continually having his yes. waist. Yes, yes. So it's, it's making his way back. So okay. the criteria has, um, has been sort of set right. Okay. So as, speaking about the Olympia and where it was to where it is today, um, what do you think about the broadcasting part of Olympia? The last time Mr. Olympia was broadcasted, which was 2014, before then it hadn't been broadcasted for 30 years. The mm -hmm. last time it was broadcasted was when you actually won your first Olympia in 1984. Right. Mm -hmm. right? So what do you think contributed to now you know, it being on TV and being televised? Well, I mean, bodybuilding is a sport that everyone participates in. I mean, if you pick up a weight, you're a bodybuilder. <laughs> okay, it perfect. doesn't mean you have to go to the stage with it, but right. if you play golf and lift weights, you're a exactly. bodybuilder, you're you boxed, you're <laughs> yeah, you, you're building the body, right. trying to get it better than it was before. So mm -hmm. the entire world mm -hmm. is now participating in weight training, which attributes, which is attributed to bodybuilding. Right. So now that the world does, the world no longer look at it as a negative as it did years ago. Now it's like if you're not lifting weights or you're not going to the gym, something's wrong with you. Yeah, fitness is everywhere. Right? Fitness is everywhere. So the networks see the value of that, okay. and as a result, they are there to you know, participate. I see you're now on social media, Instagram, and right. mm -hmm. Facebook and all that, so I think you had to get pushed. Well, into listen, that. <laughs> I, I like it a lot. I like the fact that I'm in touch with my fans in Russia, mm -hmm. in Germany, Switzerland, Sweden, Japan. You know, there's 190 countries in the International Federation of Bodybuilding, okay. which is fantastic. So you get an opportunity to impact, and I get an opportunity to sort of get a rebirth or to stay alive, exactly. you know, in our sport, which is which is great. That means a lot. So I'm not right. forgetting to become an old morsel of hey, you know, toss nobody's the gonna sack. Forget Lee <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make sure of that. <laughs> so uh, according to so now, you know, back then they didn't have, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the sport of uh, men's physique. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So now they have men's physique. I actually compete in that as well. And they actually now men's physique is more of a, a fitness model look, correct? It is, it is. They do yeah, men's physique is something that anybody can aspire to to do you have a lot of businessmen that are participating in that now you don't have to be real big or you don't have to right. you know <laughs> chill down eight thousand protein yeah. shakes yeah, a day yeah. you know you can have your nice abs a nice taper look and, and and you're ready for competition exactly you know it, it still takes you know dedication and hard work but it's that's just right. a different um, makeup of the character that's right that's right exactly. it's a nice variety and i love the fact that the sport is now um is, is now broken up in all of these different divisions. You have your physique, you have, for ladies, you have bikini, you have your fitness, you have figure. For the guys, you know, they're now introducing what is called a classic physique, which is sort of a step down from bodybuilding. It's right. different than just regular physique. Classic right. physique really is what bodybuilding was years ago. Frank Zane look. But the physique is really a physique. It's rid of physique. You, you have to have legs. Exactly. Now, you know, in regular physique, you don't have to have legs. You, you have the long you short, right. you can hide your weakness, <laughs> yeah. which I don't like that. I think you're going to have a total physique, you got to have legs. You do. I, Else I, I you agree. look like you're riding on the turkey. I agree. So, you know? <laughs> so the classic physique now, the, the what they wear is going to show off their legs. Yeah, yeah. These, these are shorts. They come right, right just, just on the upper part of the thigh. So exactly. you got to have some wheels to gotta do have it. Some wheels. <laughs> gotta have wheels. I think you got to have wheels. <laughs> to be a bodybuilder, I, period. I totally agree. Well, listen, stay right there, Lee Haney. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. When we come back, we're going to come back and talk about the Lee Haney games. Okay. All right, stay with us. All right, welcome back to the Old Fashioned Health Network. Good health inside and out. On our break, we had a question from the audience. Yes, um, for someone that's tall and slender that has a high metabolism, what would be your best recommendation for putting on mass? Okay, that's that's pretty simple to fix, you know, uh, from the perspective of dealing with the body type. You're what is called ectomorph. I'm mesomorphic, naturally muscular. You're ectomorphic, naturally thin. So what we have to do is design a program that would consist of basic fundamental movements, such as bench press for the chest, shoulder presses for the shoulders, bicep curls for the biceps, squats for the legs. With those basic movements, we need to keep the, re keep the rep range no more than five to seven. 
then now that we've stimulated the muscle, we now have to give it the right nutrition. Uh, calories that burn slow, but also high, such as breads, pasta, rice, whole eggs, uh, some red meat, not to overdo it. So by doing so and doing it frequently, at least six meals a day, that'll put you on the right track. Did that for Evander Holofield, did that for Sean Bradley, it works. I know what I'm talking about. Did it for Sean Bradley, huh? Because he was right. thin. Yeah, he was thin. We put 20 pounds on him uh, in two months. Whew. Mm -hmm. Wow, you might want to yeah. talk to this man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so before the break, we were talking about the Lee Haney games. Um, uh, was it the first year you had it this year? Well, you know something, the Lee Haney games have sort of uh, evolved. At okay. first, we began with something called uh, the, uh, we call it the Fit Kids. Okay. Or the Teen Challenge, which is an event that was set up for teenagers. You know, high schools would bring kids out. They would flip the tires, bench press, you know, do right, different type right. of movements. And then it slowly involved, evolved into an obstacle style race. Okay. And then after the obstacle style race was placed there along with something for kids as well as teenagers. Okay. Then we added the strongman event. So now we have the obstacle race the uh, strength training uh, event for the teenagers. Now we have the strong man for the adults. So we got something for everybody. And this year we added a NPC qualifier, I which we brought the physique games along with the fitness game. So okay. now we combine the two. We say the Lee Haney's physique and fitness game. It was an awesome event. We had well over uh, 200 athletes competing there, okay. close to 300 altogether. That's a lot of athletes. Yes, so that's the first time that it's taken place here in Georgia. Okay. Uh, we're very proud of the event. We were we had it held at the uh, Georgia International Convention Center, okay. which was the perfect location. That's downtown, right? No, that's in the city of College Park. Oh, College Park. Oh, yes. you know what? I know what that is. I College to Park. To the airport. It was <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. And you know, this was also the fundraiser for what I have uh, it's called Haynes Harvest House which is a mentoring program for boys. We started that back in 1992. Wow. So this was our annual fundraiser. So what kind of mentoring about the, the, for the boys? Is it a certain age group? Well, we go anywhere from six to 17 years old. Okay. You know, for a lot of the young men who don't have fathers present in their home, we work with the moms and helping to give them good life skills. Right. Uh, we have a program called uh, Raising a Modern Day Night that we take a boy from the age of you know, he starts first as a page at the age of six, then he right. becomes a squire, okay. then he becomes a knight. Then you reach, reach 17, levels. you gotta reach the different levels. You'd have to prove yourself on each one, but it's a great program. We've got some awesome men mm -hmm. that help run the program. It's gotta Where's be the hearts of men. Right now it's in Forest Park. Forest Park. We do it out of a church called the Rock Church there okay. in Forest Park, Georgia. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we, we really enjoy it. We got a weight facility set up for them. Oh yeah, we, yeah, they pump iron, flip tires, the whole deal. We, we go after it. Has any of them competed in the games? <laughs> yes, all of them was in the games. Uh, ever since we've had them, they've all been in the games. Okay, must have been mandatory to get to the next level. Yeah, yeah. And we got young ladies that, uh, that participate as part of the program, too. They're in the yeah. games, too, climbing, jumping, flipping tires, the whole deal. <laughs> it would be something if that was actually um, broadcasted one day? Yes, you know, matter of fact, uh, on my website, uh, if you go to LeeHaneyGames.com, you'll get right. to see pictures and different things, see the kids running, jumping, and doing so forth. But yeah, we would love to get uh, broadcast. Matter of fact, be nice. we, we want to talk to you guys about doing it. Hey, yeah. you know, talk to us. Yeah, talk get to it on board. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, you know, a lot of athletes in Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, they have their own supplement lines, you know, mm -hmm. using their name. I, as I understand, you have yours as well. Yes, it's called Lee Haney's Nutritional Support System. Okay, so what does that include? Well, it includes uh, products that's geared towards the general population. Okay. Our leading product of a seven day is a seven day systemic cleansing and detox, because that's very important. You know, everybody from time to time need to detox their bodies. Just like when you okay. take your automobile in to get it serviced, all changed, right. filter change, you got to do that to the body. Right. So that's one of the programs I began myself way back 
back in 1982. Okay. And so uh, I later introduced to the bodybuilding world by okay. creating a combination of herbs and so forth to help clean the liver, kidney, bloodstream, urinary system. Okay. And no matter whether you're into sports or general population, this is something your body needs. Good in general. Yeah, so it, so, so it crosses over. Exactly. It's not mm -hmm. just in one lane, right? That's right. And this is something you've used, so it's not something oh, yeah. cooked up in the lab. It, you know? it works very good. Matter of fact, um, we do what is called a uh, a transformation weight loss challenge every year. Okay. And we were able to launch that on Steve Harvey's show about six years ago. Really? And um, our, this past winter, the male dropped 70 pounds in 60 days. The female dropped 60 pounds and in 60 days. And this is using your product? This is using my product. Wow. So we have a whole kit. You know, people wanted to know about it. They can just go to my website, LeeHaney.com, and get information about it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I actually visited that website. You also have a workout DVD on there, right? That's right. We have one that's geared towards functional training. Mm -hmm. And functional training combines strength, core, cardio, and flexibility. I'm a big believer in functional training. You got to do that. That kicks the heat up. And I always use the term heat burns meat. You know, <laughs> okay. when you put a little heat to the body by using a circuit style, the body heats up and thermogenesis kicks in. So the right. body starts to burn calories more efficiently. Right. That's the name of the game. If your goal is a lose weight. Now, I'm a man who wanted to drop weight. I mean, wanted to put on some weight. We got to keep him away from that one. <laughs> yeah. That one is not for him. <laughs> so as you, as, you, as you have been training throughout your years, have you ever changed up your style of training? I do. I do. Of course, uh, I don't train as heavy. You know, the intensity level is still there. Okay. I use a combination of functional training like every other day, right. then I would use the bodybuilding style training. Let's say if you go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the bodybuilding style training. Okay. Using, let's say Monday would be arms and, and, and uh, chest, right. Wednesday would be legs, Friday would be back and shoulders. Okay. In between days would be the functional training. Exactly. With the medicine ball, the ropes, and the cardio, and that I sort of thing. Love, I love the sprinting. I love it. I, mean, I had my functional training this morning, man. Oh, you did? It, 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 you didn't it's, fight nobody? Oh, it's, I don't think nobody wanted to be a part of that. I didn't want to be a part of it. <laughs> All right, so specifically when you were winning your titles, right, the eight Mr. Olympias, you know, they always say if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's right. Did you continually have the same regimen for all eight years, or did you just switch it up at all? Well, the regiments were the same as far as how you would match the different muscle groups. Okay. Push, pull, save the joints. Right. Push meaning chest, pull meaning biceps. Mm -hmm. Push meaning shoulders, presses, pull meaning back. Gotcha. You see, legs is push-pull in itself, quads, and then hams. Gotcha. So just so you stay with stay within that track, uh, you're going to save your joints. Now, as far as the intensity level, uh, I did learn, particularly my last Mr. Olympia, I, the last year I cut back just a bit on the number of sets and repetitions, and I looked better than I did. Because you cut back on the sets. I was, a, I was a slight amount of overtraining. Yeah, mm. you can't overtrain. That's why I always say stimulate, don't annihilate. I was going to ask you about that quote. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Quote. What is that quote? Okay, that, so quote that's what that quote means pretty much. That quote means don't tear yourself up. Okay. You know, it stimulate. doesn't take a lot. Just stimulate the muscle and then give it good nutrition, allow it time to cover, mm -hmm. recover. Everything has to have that. Have right. to be a recovery period in everything. Right. Even if it's not physical, mentally you have to have recovery. You gotta go out and hear birds sing, you know, let the sun get on and get some vitamin get D3. Some, some light. You gotta get some gym. light. You gotta have a balance there. I think a lot of people make that misconception that they have to go into the gym, you know, six days a week. And, and you know, I work out a lot myself, five, six days mm -hmm. a week, but you know, I switch it up. I don't work the same body part out. I can at least two days of rest, right? Right. Something mm -hmm. like that because they'll say, well, you work out every day in the gym. You work every, they think you're working the same body part out every day. Right. And mm -hmm. it's not like that. It's you're giving like other that. body parts rest. And that's very smart. Matter of fact, I have an organization called the International Association of Fitness Science. Exactly. Which we teach proper training system. For instance, after a competition, I go to what is called a three-day power circuit. Okay. Where I just train Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Each body part being trained once every seventh day. I do that for a month and a half to two months. Afterwards, I'll switch to a three on off one. Right. Each body part is trained in once every fourth day. Okay. Then if I'm close to the show, about six 
uh, let's six, seven weeks out for, from a show, right. I may switch to a straight six, if that's necessary in order to get rid of a little extra body fat. Right, you gotta just look at your coach and talk to him or look in the mirror. That's right. You got to know exactly where you are before you make the switch to a straight six. But we teach all of that uh, with our certification program. We're the only one that have a program uh, such such as that. Nobody else can teach that I was ask you other than myself right? or Mike Christian or Arnold. We can do this because right. this is where we're from. Right. You know, but no other certification can teach that because they don't know that. We've lived it. Wow, that's one of the most important things I was going to ask you was, you know, you have other certifications out here, NASA and ACE and XYZ, mm -hmm. and what makes your certification different? And you can just hit that's the very right. thing, you know, we like, for instance, a gentleman asked me the question concerning body type. Well, I can give him exactly what he needs for his body type right. because there's a training program that goes with that. Right. You know, if someone was heavy, endomorphic, wanted to get rid of body fat, right. then now, okay, guess what? We'll do more of a functional training style program. His deal is not heavy weights and so forth. Right. And we have the ultimate bodybuilding certification mm -hmm. for someone who wants to compete or train someone on that level. Exactly. Or we have functional training. That's another certification for someone who wants to train people within the general population. Right. And that lends itself to every different age group. Okay. Like one of my clients is 87, 86 years old. And you know, I train him with functional training. Functional training. training That's training. right. Gotcha. I don't have him do an ultimate bodybuilder. It's not where he's at. Can't do that. He want to stay functional. You know, want everything to move. To, you know. Body of life right there. there you go. <laughs> so, say somebody in the audience for me, we want to get that kind of certification. You know, what is the process for me to go get that? Okay, all they have to do is go to the website uh, www.iafs then the word certification dot com, yep. and then uh, take a look and select which certification you're interested in. You would get the information mailed to you once you make your purchase. Okay. And then you would take the uh, take the exam online when you're ready. Then for now, we have it set up where there's a mandatory hands-on training to make sure that you really know what you're doing. Okay, so I have to go somewhere. To you would have to go there. That. Right? It'll be here. We'll have a workshop, which will have wow. clinics in March, June, and October. So it's one-on-one -on -one where we can look, see, and make critique, sure right. that you're clear and critique you. Now, that's something I know other certifications do not have. They don't do everything is online. That's pretty, that's you know, nice. you gotta, you can't, if you're really gonna teach somebody, you have to know that they know that they know because they're getting ready to work with people's bodies yeah. and people's yeah, health. health yeah. And then and, and we have another entity also whereby if you say, well, Mr. Hain, I can't come to Atlanta. You know, I, I live in Washington. Right. Well, guess what? We have master trainers all over the United States. Okay. Linda Murray is one of our master trainers in California. Yeah. We have Mike Christian there and, and Vicki Gates there in Texas. Uh, we have Bear Francis and Steve Weinberger in New York. So we have Charles, Charles, uh, Charles Glass is there. We have master trainers all, all over the United States. To make sure that yeah, so that person can go see that master trainer for the final walkthrough. Walk. Yeah, yeah. If they want to go to the next levels. Gotcha. So we got different levels, but. Uh, I don't know how you do You're doing a lot. You know, <laughs> you know something, there's a, you just can't waste time in a day. Because you, if you waste that. time, you cannot get it back. So it's I, the most valuable thing in the world. It, you, you can't get time back, but you can do a lot of things if you don't waste time and you keep. You maintain your focus. That's awesome. We learned so much. Oh, fortunately, we got to get out of here. But Mr. Lee Haney, <laughs> it was awesome interviewing you for this show. Well, pleasure, was man. Look good, man. Hey, I tried. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, Lee Haney products. <laughs> That's right. I appreciate you. Look great, man. Right, thank you so much. I'll All see right. you again. Hopefully, on stage again okay. soon. Um, again, this is the Old Fashioned Health Network. And before we get out of here, we want to give Lee Haney a parting gift. We have for you. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. A couple fitness apparel from Rowdy Renaissance. All right. So please check that out. It has some good things in there, some good shirts. Oh man, yeah, yeah right wow. sizes too. Yeah. Woo! Good stuff from Rowdy. Yeah, baby. Definitely do that. This is great. Thank you. Thank of course, you. Mr. Lee Haney. And we also have Bio Coffee, which is very good stuff right here. I don't drink coffee, but this has a um, Man, I love coffee. A lot of wheatgrass. You have to have coffee it. when you're over 50. Try that. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get through those workouts. Over 50? Yeah, probably. This is today, great. Right? Now, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's also Bio Coffee. So a little Thank party you. gifts from us, from you, from, from us to you, Old Fashioned Health Network. Thank you very much. Thank Again, you. check us out, oldfashionedhealth.com, for everything you need, mental health, physical health, nutritional health. 
everything you need. This is Jazz, your host for The Fitness Show. Until next time.